How's it going guys? And in this video, we're gonna be talking about one-way ANOVA tests and pairwise two-key tests that you can do in Python. And so the data is gonna be really simple and simple data types. It's just to see how you can do this. And so uh, a little bit of background on this is why and when would you do an ANOVA one-way test and why and when would you do a pairwise two-key test? And so the first question is something that you do when you want to determine if you have some statistically significant difference between more than two groups that you're looking at. So if you only had two groups that you wanted to see is group A and group B statistically different, uh, that's something you get away with a paired t-test. Um, but the more robust and general approach to this is to use an ANOVA test. And so ANOVA lets you look at three or more groups. So in this example, I've got four different groups of variables that I wanna see, is there a statistically significant difference between all these groups? And so the other thing to note here is that specifically we're looking at an ANOVA one-way test. What does one refer to? That means that we only have one independent variable here. So an example of that independent variable or input would be something like time. So group A could be, when I give one second of time to plants, they all grew one inch. Group B was given two seconds of time, they grew two inches. Group C was given three inches of time, those plants grew three inches. And group D was given five seconds of time and they grew five inches. So what I wanna see is whether or not the independent variable, the time, affects the amount of growth that I'm seeing. So growth here would be the dependent variable in this fictitious, simplistic example. And so let's say I've got these three groups of uh, things that I'm now going to want to compare, and I only have one independent variable, time, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn to an ANOVA one-way test. And so the key library that you'll be using is scipy.stats, and I'm importing it as stats for the sake of brevity. And what you do in Python is that you basically can uh, concatenate your lists as sublists. So I've got group A, B, C, D, and then I created a groups list. So this is a bunch of lists that I lumped together. And I want to make note here that these lists can be different lengths. So it's okay that I've got three elements in group A and you know a different number of elements in the other groups. That's totally cool with Python. Um, and it's also cool with the stats uh, ANOVA test. And so um, to run this, it's very simple. You just, I'm gonna uncomment this line. We're going to be calling the stats library and it has a method called f one way. And specifically what you wanna do is you wanna pass in each individual group as a separate list. I think usually if you're coding, you're probably gonna have lumped all your lists together. So that's what this little asterisk does is it allows you to specify it like that. Alternatively, you could have done this like group A, group B, and so on. Um, I just think it's a lot easier and cleaner to do it like this. And so basically what's going to happen when you run this code is that it will return a P value and an F value. Um, without going too deep into the stats, the P value is the thing that basically tells you the likelihood of a uh, false um, positive error. And so uh, that is us incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis. And so the null hypothesis says that we are going to assume that all of these groups have the same exact average and that there's no statistically significant difference between them. So group A, B, C, D are all identical. And so what the ANOVA one-way test is going to tell us is whether or not that null hypothesis is bogus. Um, so I'm going to run this code right now and i um, doing this in debug mode just so you can watch it happen. Um, and so basically what we get out of this is the following. Um, you can see that the p-value is very, very small. Um, and I don't know why it's, uh, it's not showing the decimal here. Um, but basically, as long as your p-value is less than 0 0.05, that's a arbitrary number I know, but um, that seems to be the number that a lot of statisticians agree on. Um, as long as it's smaller than five or uh, five percent, that's something that you can then say this is a statistically significant difference between our uh, groups to say that you know there, there's something here. Um, and so that's what the ANOVA one-way test tells you. It's not really that informative other than saying there's a difference here. That's it. So 
the next question you have is, okay, uh, within groups A, B, C, D, there's a difference, but where or yeah, where are these difference or differences? And so that's when you will bring in what is referred to as a Tukey test. And so I'm going to comment this guy out because we don't care about it anymore. And now what we're going to do is actually perform the uh, pairwise Tukey HSD, which stands for honestly significant difference, which I think is kind of funny. Um, but basically, this is uh, the next step in our process of actually uh, determining where within our particular data set, so all these groups, where are we seeing these differences? And when you are doing this, you are specifically comparing pairs of groups. So how does group A compare to group B? How does group A compare to group C? How does group A compare to group D? Um, and so on. So you've got uh, different combinations or pairs that we care about here. And there's only two uh, groups allowed in a combo. So and it has to be unique because we've already compared A to B. B to A is the same exact thing as A to B in this example. Um, so that's where the two key test comes into this thing. So if you're coding this in Python, um, this is something that took me a while to find, and that's the reason why I'm making this video, is to just make it easier for people out there. Uh, basically, the way to do this without doing a bunch of pandas and uh, you know special data structures and all those other you know ND arrays uh, is to basically take all of your data. So in my case, I've got you know group A, sorry, <laughs> here that is going uh, one one one. Group B was two two. Group C was three three. Group D was five five. So basically, you're concatenating or appending all of that data into a a list of Python that is only one dimension. It's very simple to work with. And you are also creating a groups one dimensional array. And so groups one dimensional array is the exact same length as the data array or the values array. And so as you can see, the first element corresponds to group A, which had a value of one. And then the last element here was five and that corresponded to the group D. And you know, you've also got all these other combos. So three corresponded to C in my example. And so with these one dimensional arrays, now you can actually move on to run your two key test. So the way you do that is I just type in like this, two key test gets, and then I've imported the pairwise two key method from stats models. So what you do is very simply, you're gonna say your data, so you pass in the data, um, and then you're also going to pass in the groups. And so the groups is where you've specified where each element maps to in that values list. That was your first argument to this. And then additionally, you can specify the alpha value. Alpha was that uh, t-test, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, ANOVA one-way test we did. So we're basically making sure that it's not nonsensical. Um, like if all these groups have the same exact value, like if group B was also 1-1, one, one, group C was 1-1, one, one, uh, group D was all 1-1, one, one, um, we wouldn't notice anything significant here. So uh, good way to fact check yourself, but right now we're going to go do two key tests. So um, I'm going to run this code and I'm also going to print out the results because I think those are pretty cool. Uh, two key test. And so now what I'm going to do is down another print statement, run this in debug mode, shift F9. I uh, don't know why I did that. Sorry, one second. I'm gonna run it again. And look at our console output. So this is what we get out of running our Tukey test um, with that data. So Tukey test, gives us these columns where it's comparing group A to group B, and this P adjacent value is this P value, and it being equivalent to 0.001 indicates that it's very unlikely that we're going to incorrectly reject our null hypothesis. So in other words, that means that there is a statistically significant difference between groups A and B in this example. There's a statistic, every time you see P less than 0.05, uh, that indicates that they are statistically significant. So basically what we end up with here is a bunch of uh, data telling us that we have statistically significant differences for each one of the six unique combinations or pairs of our 
groups. And so that is what you get out of this thing. And uh, I think it's fun to do this in another way so we can make sure that we can fact check ourselves. So if I change all of these numbers to one, just so we can see what the opposite looks like, where and basically all this is identical. So if I do like, you know, 1.1, um, I basically keep everything just super similar. And we rerun our ANOVA test just to kind of summarize what we've done here. Um, what I expect to see is a p-value that is very large. And yeah, we see a p-value of 0 0.37. So basically, if we ran this test, uh, this indicates that our independent variable did not have an effect on changing any of our groups. So it's basically saying there's no statistically significant difference. And if you wanted to be uh, a little pedantic here, you could also neglect that and still run your uh, Tukey test. Although I will say in terms of optimizing your code, I would not do this. Ideally, if you wanted to do this in an efficient way, you would first run your uh, ANOVA one-way test. And if it's not greater than, I'm sorry, if it's not less than 0 0.05, the p-value, uh, you would not waste the extra time running the actual Tukey test. Um, but in our, in our example, what we're going to do is we're going to run it anyways, where all of our data was identical. Let's even give the D a little 1.1 at the end, just so we match it uh, and rerun our code. And what we expect to see here is basically a bunch of really high p-values saying that um, our groups are identical. So again, um, what we're seeing here is that you know between group A and group B, p was 0 0.9, which indicates that you know most likely, so 90% likelihood that your null hypothesis is correct, meaning that there is no statistically significant difference between groups A and B. Um, and you can just go down the row and you can see how high this is for everything. The only slightly interesting thing that happened here was, you know, comparing D to some other group, uh, and that's because D had that 1.1 in it, um, which was a little bit different. It changed the average of D, but still not enough to statistically be considered a difference between those two groups. So I'm going to wrap things up with that. I hope that this is helpful. I will provide a link to this GitHub repo uh, so that you guys can download this and play around with it. Hopefully this is simple and easy to follow. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I will talk to you guys next time.